Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 3. Everything's been so, so calm and peaceful and happy for so long. Or for two episodes. Practicing for life as Aquaman. They should been captured. They're all a little bit comfortable. They've been just handling everyone with such ease. Yeah, gambling dude just seems so relaxed, so far ahead. There might be more to the plan than that. She downplays it, but it's, it's, I mean, it's gotta be a huge deal, obviously. She clearly values her existing life very much. Gojo's serious side is something else. He just takes on new life. Why are you looking at me like that? His lighthearted nature. Okay, speaking of which, I was gonna say his lighthearted nature makes such a great contrast for his serious moments that they hit extra hard. But then abs. Episode 27, Hidden Inventory 3. We interrupt this rescue mission to bring you Anime Beach episode. I'm wondering if that, that shot of Gojo riding the dragon isn't uh, a Dragon Ball reference. Oh, we already rescued her and we just went to the beach after that. That was easy. <laughs> That didn't turn out too much. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> Imagine being on that plane and they can even see it. I don't know, maybe this is all a way to lure you into a false sense of relaxation and security. No way! Whoa, look at him! Look at that hairstyle. Aw, he was just a kid. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of a photo I have of my dad. Because my dad is super straight laced, super serious. But I have a picture of him from the 70s with like hippie clothing and long hair, which is hilarious to me. There's something so sweet and innocent about that. Like, you know, he's still trying to fit in, be a kid. He hasn't traded his individuality for a life of finance yet. <laughs> These two are a great pair. They really get along. <laughs> By shooting her with sea cucumber. He's giving her a good time before she assimilates with a deity. It's just the right thing to do. I've all been there. Is that because people are just happier? Because they have the beach? Oh, he's going to be talking about the beach. Speaking of great pairings. There's something very Final Fantasy X about this. Knowing that the end is coming, sort of. You have a bigger responsibility, a bigger mission to like a, a deity. And having a lot of fun, but that, that carrying a certain pain with it. The transient nature of it heightening the beauty, but also the sadness. Brought to you by Okinawa Tourism Board. It was the most poignant aquarium visit ever had by anyone. No exit. Time's up. You also feel that lurking evil. It all feels like this is by design. Let him have fun in Okinawa. For now. We also are seeing that Gojo's kind of wearing himself out in a key way. Best protection mission ever. Because <laughs> I have more fun than anyone. I thought that was a- WHAT THE HELL JUST HAPPENED? I thought that was a- a metaphor. Here we go. Here we go. This is just like the training exercise. It's awfully calm for someone who got stabbed. That's been established. Don't- come on. Don't do that to me. Don't give me a flashback now. So he's been a fan. Damn. You don't forget eyes like that either. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was by design. It was by design. 
Where the hell did he? That's what it was. He really knew his knew his target. Even expecting it, this this is such such a shock. This is so abrupt. Are you sure? Oh, okay, he pulled Inosuke. <laughs> Damn, he's just a man. How the hell does he do this every time? But they're still underestimating him. And I don't feel bad about forgetting his name, for once. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He uh, He's just, I mean, he's Gojo. If anyone deserves to be confident. But that's always how I feel about Gojo, that... That's his only weakness, that carefreeness. Also, there's something really genius about that flashback shot, justifying it, interrupting the, the action. It's chilling to think they made contact all those years ago. Sometimes I, I wonder how many links like that there are that we never realize. Like, people we meet in life that have significant impacts on our lives, there's a very solid possibility that we've interacted with them before, or like passed them on the street before, or something like that. Just the way odds work, and you would never know. <laughs> That's exactly the point. That's exactly right. Yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Obligatory. Hi, hi. And this guy had to be a beast. There was no way. This animation, though. All for nothing. Damn, this, this technique. Go to just makes everything look so cool. There's the cover. <gasps> no! No! Oh my god! Make it stop! This is my worst fear happening in front of my eyes. Somebody got Gojo. It's actually possible. Healing technique. I'm just I'm catching myself. I know he lives. <laughs> but it's just so, it's horrifying to see this happen to Gojo. How is this possible? Even knowing that he survives and even being aware of the, the risk and even being aware or suspecting that this guy was playing on their calmness. Something about seeing Gojo shredding, being shredded up like that. Also, given the way it was animated. It's such a visceral experience. The Gojo who cannot be touched, literally. God, this just gives so much more context to a lot of things. I never imagined during Gojo's many interactions with Megumi, what he had experienced with his father. Total poker face in that regard, as far as I can remember. Maybe I just didn't pick up on it. There are probably clues. But also there's one positive for me out of this, which is that I've been talking about this thing happening for so long. That Gojo is such a pinnacle of strength and support and safety that it almost feels natural for him to get taken down. But it's already happened. He's been snuck up and snuck up on before he's been bested so that makes me feel like he has a little bit of an, an edge that he's hiding now in the present day he's experienced mortality his own weakness i also feel that suddenly there's more more grit gojo's still gojo he's still got that carefreeness but there's a little bit of an edge to it in modern day where here he seems more much more youthful which i mean is explained by his age but also by an experience like this i wonder i mean i feel like this is gonna this arc will end with the villain still being alive <laughs> This is not how I wanted to say goodbye. She didn't get to say goodbye to Gojo either. What does this feel like? Can't even imagine. Damn, this is like wonder if that had even occurred to her. This is bit this is huge. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that, the implications that are, um, are, are massive. That's the life of being a renegade. Gojo has also always shown himself to have a healthy distance from the Jujutsu society infrastructure, which has always been refreshing to me, because let's be honest, they don't seem like the most ethical group, although their stated aims are for the good of humanity. There's a little bit of a question mark about what it really is, who they really are, and just how far they're willing to go. Also, can't help but wonder if somehow this isn't Gojo having a soft, soft spot for her. 
君の未来は私たちが保証する It's really sweet and very conflicting at a moment like this. Yeah, of course, I mean, of course. Wow, Gero actually giving her the choice to live. I don't think anyone suggested that to her. Oh. This episode. No. I got so lured in. I got so lured in. They're not ready. They were never ready. Brace yourself, Ghetto. Ghetto doesn't know what we know. He hasn't seen season one. Speaking of character altering events. And then it all it all went to sh <laughs> then everything fell apart. I knew it. It was just too it was too 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 happy. They were just too too in his own in too high profile of a spot Rico was such a sweet character just cut way too short in just three episodes they did a really nice job establishing her relationship with Gojo so that even me you know I'm imagining is it possible like, is there a future is there a way that she could continue to be in the story even though we, we haven't seen her in present day my hopes were there hopes against hopes for her to just be for her to go out like that you know not even joining Tengen, not even dying in a battle, just straight up being assassinated. It's heartbreaking. Well, that was the episode. <laughs> that was the episode of this arc so far. I wonder what, if any, impact this event and the whole Tengen thing will have on Ghetto's eventual turn. Just speculating here, but all of Jujutsu society and Tengen and the schools, it revolves around the idea of protecting humanity. Without humanity, you wouldn't need it, right? You just live. You just are, you know, curse users and powerful people. And I have this very distinct feeling that there is a lot more darkness to the society, to this whole system than we're really seeing. And I think some of that's deliberate, just from a storytelling perspective, but also because you would want to keep the students from it as well. You want them to be soldiers for the cause. You don't necessarily want them to fully understand the cause and all its workings. I mean, even watching the scene, even watching her descend into these lower chambers, there's something very Evangelion about it. There's something very kind of dark about this elevator to this tree chamber the way it's drawn and just the idea of her being absorbed or as we have found out or as it's been implied erased was that part of the bargain was was that something that she knew of or that we all knew of she made it sound more like it would be distinctly her just as Tengen though maybe that was just her optimistic wish for what it would be Ghetto through this experience and through other subsequent experiences might just become aware of what he's fighting for you know what he is a soldier for and I can imagine that leading to some cynicism though you would also imagine if that's the case Gojo would also know which i think would also explain a lot as i mentioned earlier he's shown repeatedly that he is not necessarily aligned with the schools and jujutsu society but his own thing which includes protecting other people there's this mistaken idea that having a cause means being on a side it's not necessarily the case you can be aligned with someone's viewpoints and not be a member or in allegiance to them in fact i think absolute allegiance to a group is often a sign that something has gone wrong that there's some nuance missed because what are the chances you'll align with someone on everything you know if you were just thinking purely from a ground-up analytical perspective again this is all speculation but when that floor falls out, when the infrastructure you've relied on for so long and identified with for so long falls out, there's an easy path there to total cynicism and hatred where you throw out the whole thing and are antagonistic towards it, or you don't throw out the whole thing, you take what's actually you, what you actually believe, and try to do the best to uphold the values you thought the thing stood for without oversubscribing to the thing itself. But I suspect that's something that will have to play out through the rest of the, the series, if at all. God, was this episode amazing. The events themselves were good enough, but the animation matched it. The sequences were fantastic. It's really great narrative tension too, when you feel something's going a certain way, but you also have hope. You have hope that maybe it's going okay, maybe it's gonna be fine. Like I myself as a viewer got lured into the, the guy's trap, even being aware that it could be a trap, but it happened and it's on. I'm very curious to see what the next episode holds for Ghetto in particular as he battles this man whose name I refuse to learn.